Hi everyone, I want to talk about Rami Pro. Have you heard about that before? Okay, Rami Pro is an angiotensin converting enzyme abator. Well, by the time we'll be done, you will probably need no question any further. With that in mind, let's go. Like I've just said, Rami Pro is an angiotensin converting enzyme beta. Other examples in that group will include benazepri, captopri, silazopri, enalapri, enalaprilat, osinopri, niacinopri, mesipri, verindopri, quinapri, tradulapri. We have to note something here. Ramipray is not good for blacks. If you're a black guy or a black woman, uh, Ramipray is not the best for you, except you have diabetes mellitus. Not as useful as in whites or Asians when it comes to Ramipray. So what I'm trying to say here is that when black, white, Asians would need this medication, whites and Asians will benefit from its use than blacks. In other words, if there are other alternatives for the same ailment, it's better to use those other alternatives in black patients. Blacks who have more angioedema than whites and Asians. Ramipri could be known depending on your jurisdiction and the pharmaceutical company supplying Ramipri in your zone. Could be Arteos or ACT Ramipri, Apple Ramipri or AG Ramipri. Like I said, the class is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, and we use Ramipri as an anti hypertensive So, if someone is having hypertension, could take Ramipri. In congestive cardiac failure, you can use Ramipri. In myocardial infarction, other ST elevated myocardial infarction, or non ST elevated myocardial infarction. Uh, even post acute treatment on maintenance, you can use Ramipri. You can use Ramipri in diabetic kidney disease because it has cardio renoprotective effect. And it's not only Ramipri that could do this, or angiotensin converting enzyme repeaters could do this particular job, that is cardiorenal protective function. In left ventricular dysfunction, imagine someone with left ventricular ejection fraction below 45%, you can use Ramipri. But I'm not saying using Ramipri is enough because you need implantable cardiovascular defibrillator. But if you want oral medication to help, Ramipri is good. And individuals with kidney problem or diabetes mellitus and abstention, Ramipri will be the best. As a matter of fact, Ramipri is even now incorporated into the management of diabetes mellitus. So it's a kind of cardiovascular risk reduction process. Ramipri could appear in various forms. The capsule is either generic or artist, confining at the strength of 1.25 mg, 2.5 mg, 5 mg, 10 mg, or 15 mg. You can swallow the capsule whole. You may choose to open the capsule and mix the content with water apple juice or apple sauce. 
The mechanism of action of Ramipri is essentially the same with all other medications under a angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors class. It prevents angiotensin 1 from being converted to angiotensin 2. It undergoes enzymatic saponification by esterase in the liver to the active metabolite. The active metabolite here is ramiprilate. The ramiprilate binds to angiotensin converting enzyme, preventing the formation of a strong vasoconstrictor. The hemodynamics is essentially that the oxygen of action is between one to two hours and the duration of action is up to 24 hours. It is well absorbed by aura and has high protein binding capability. Monitoring and dosing. Anyone on Ramiprin should have the blood pressure monitored. You have to monitor the renal function test, particularly the blood rare nitrogen, creatinine, and of course, you measure the potassium. Why is the potassium so important? I'll go into that later on because hyperkalemia is a big problem with angiotensin converting enzyme in beetles. And when the potassium is high, you keep your remedy off the table. You measure the complete blood count. Why that? We'll go into that in a bit. Monitor the above regularly with BP within the first two hours of administration of Ramipri. Then the rest, you can measure them every two weeks. When you are dosing, I mean, when you are giving Ramipri to patient or you are patient, you are taking Ramipri, the ideal situation is to start low, start with a very low dosage, then titrate based on the desired goal. For example, Desire goal might be a particular level of the blood pressure. It's difficult for me to say categorically the value you should be expecting because it depends on the goal. For example, if you are dealing with diabetes mellitus and the individual is not having high blood pressure, so you know you are not expecting anything to be high. But generally, anyone with diabetes mellitus will expect the blood pressure range of nothing greater than 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury. So you can start from 2.5 or 5 milligram, and maybe you can even start with 1.25 milligram, depending on the blood pressure, the age, and the desired goal. In pregnancy, I'm going to will cross the placenta, and that could cause injury, malformation, and death to the fetus. Ramipri could also lead to oligoadrenals. And with oligoadrenals, there's likelihood of lung apoplasia, decreased renal function, and skeletal malformation. And there's possibility of anuria, hypotension, renal failure, skull apoplasia, and fetal death. And because of that, we don't prescribe Ramipri to pregnant women, and we don't feel comfortable prescribing Ramipri to women of childbearing age that could be pregnant without having contraceptive measures in place. So Ramipri should be taken off the table when dealing with pregnant women or women that could have pregnancy while on Ramipri. Ramipri is no good in pregnancy. What are the possible adverse effects? Hypotension. Yes. Hypotension. Even when you are using Ramipri for purpose of preventing cardiovascular risk in people with diabetes mellitus, you have to be careful 
as far as the blood pressure is concerned. So it depends on the value of the blood pressure. For example, someone is having the BP of 80 over 60 millimeters of mercury. I won't administer the Ramipri under that situation. Okay. No. Cough, yes, particularly Captopri, will give annoying, unproductive cough. Of course, autostatic apotension, commonly in the elderly. And that will also lead to a scenario like syncope, a general pectoris, is possible. Anyone on Ramipre could develop headache, fatigue, dizziness, and vertigo. Still on side effects or adverse effects, there's likelihood of chest pain. Hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia. This is one of the major trouble while on Ramipri or any of the enzyme inhibitors like angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. Hyperkalemia. There's possibility of vomiting. Increased blood renal nitrogen, kidney, and renal insufficiency. The granulocytosis is possible while on remembering, and also bone marrow depression. And with that, there's likelihood of decreased hematocrit. So anemia is possible while on remembering. Catopri, which is a member of that family, could be associated with neutropenia a granulocytosis, anemia, thrombocytopenia. That's not surprising because we're going to be dealing with bone marrow suppression. And there's likelihood of cholestatic jaundice, fulminant hepatic necrosis. As far as drug, drug interactions are concerned, I'll leave that to your pharmacist because the list is pretty long. So, regarded, depending on what the patient will be taking concomitantly at the same time while on remembering. Because I cannot just go now into the details just too long for my presentation right now. But if someone is on only remembering, no problem. But Ramipri could be used you know, under so many situations to handle many situations in different patients, and it can be on different other medications, and particularly maybe having so many other different comorbidities. So I'll leave that to your interaction with a pharmacist, or you may do research on your own. Contraindications, hypersensitivity to ramipri or any other angiotensin converting enzyme beaters is a norm not to give the medication. That's what we call hereditary idiopathic angioedema. Angioedema could develop in anyone taking ramipri. So if that history is in this patient, I'll keep my Ramipri off the table. Don't use Ramipri with a list screen or Sacubutri. So you need to know the history of the medication the individual is on, just as what I've just said, while you know, making reference to drug-drug interaction that I'll not be able to go into the list because it's just lots the pharmacist will carry. For example, Someone is on sacrobutry or a lace cream, don't give Ramipre. Someone is having bilateral renal artery stenosis, keep Ramipre off the table. Or the patient is having just one kidney, that is unilateral single kidney, don't give Ramipre. A more dynamically unstable patient, like I said, now, the patient is before me, the blood pressure is 80 over 60 or lower. I will not give Ramipri. 
hyperkalemia, which is the potassium level, is higher than the normal range between 3.5 to 5.2 or 5.5, depending on your jurisdiction. I will not give Ramipri because Ramipri on its own will keep the potassium. But, like I said, it depends on the situation you are handling. If this is heart failure and the patient is on lasers and you have your Ramipri, lasers will send out the potassium so you could just keep an eye on the potassium. It's not likely you'll be dealing with hyperkalemia if you have Ramipri with lasers. Congestive cardiac failure with hypotension, anything that gives hypotension, please be careful so that you will not think you are helping the patient but actually killing them. Renal impairment, of course, with bilateral renal tristenosis, single kidney, or apocalemia, or high level of blood urea nitrogen, or creatinine, or renal insufficiency, keep Ramipri off the table. Pregnancy, don't need to waste your time going back to that. I've just you know, talked about that a while ago. Breastfeeding for the same purpose. Warning. I don't like giving warning, but for the sake or safety of everyone, Ramipri is not expected to be given in women of pregnant age group and not on any form of contraception because you could get sued. Why? The woman could become pregnant any time and before they will even let you know they are pregnant, the organogenesis stage is passed and all sorts of anomalies could ensue. Not in any woman planning pregnancy. Let me explain. A woman is right before me at the clinic wanting to be pregnant. I will not be comfortable to prescribe Ramipri. And with that in mind, come to the end of presentation as per Ramipri. It's a good medication. We use it a lot, particularly in patients with diabetes mellitus. Now, we've gone through all the contraindications, warning, dosage, and other members of the same class called angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. If anyone is hypersensitive to Ramipri, you can use angiotensin receptor blockers. And with that, saying thank you for listening to my presentation, kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can get these presentations immediately they're published. I appreciate it.